Hey everyone. So I'm in the shop today, getting ready to do a little bit of lift testing for the very first product from Hydros Plus for Kubota. Now, it's not a hydraulic pump, but it is a hydraulic cylinder. This one you see here is the factory one and a half inch bore. The, the first product from Hydros Plus for Kubota is going to be a 1.75 inch bore. That's gonna give you somewhere on the order of 35% increase in lift capacity. And I'm, I'm staying it that way because it doesn't matter what the pressure is, whatever the pressure is, if you use this one and then you put the Hydros Plus version, you're gonna go up by about 35%. So really excited about this, sooner than I expected because I really thought that I was gonna to need to address the hydraulic pump before I could do anything with cylinder. So that's what I was focused on. The hydraulic pump on this tractor is a little more integrated than on the one series. It also has the priority flow divider basically integrated into it. I knew that that was gonna take a lot longer uh, for me to, to solve for. I, I am working on that, but I'm also not necessarily convinced it's really necessary. Uh, and, and this video here is going to explain a little bit of why I think it might be a situation where on the Kubota BX, we just do things like cylinders and maybe a third function upgrade or other upgrades that are useful to people who own this tractor, but not necessarily add flow. Now, if there are just a huge amount of people that want to run a limb saw or something bigger as a hydraulic motor, yeah, maybe, but there are some challenges. Let me just point one of those out. Um, this hose here is not really big enough to carry the additional flow. I think it's a quarter inch hose. And then there's some other, uh, there's some other plumbing in here that's quarter inch. Now it gets to three eighths out here, which would be fine, but there are some challenges. So maybe it doesn't come to the Kubota BX as far as a hydraulic flow solution, but cylinders are on the way. And I have not considered this one yet, but it probably is going to be on the list. And again, I'll explain that in here just in a moment. So back to the loader valve. Is it better? Depends on the context, like everything. As a loader valve, it is different than what you see on John Deere and pretty much any other loader that I've interacted with. I've seen one of these type of valves, but not on, a, not on a machine before. So they do exist and they do have some use cases, I think, but it is definitely different than uh, what's on other tractors. And so let me show you a couple of things that are symptoms and then we'll talk about how is it different. So one symptom is, um, let me show, let's see here. Is it all the way back? Okay. One of the things you do, if you, if you curl it in this configuration, right, it's almost curled all the way back, or maybe it is curled all the way back, and then we want to lower it. If we do that, and I've got it, oops, it won't move. It's stuck. No matter what you do, it's stuck. Well, I say no matter what you do. If you try to curl back, and, and what's happening is this is, it's deadheaded on the curl back. So that's symptom number one that was interesting to me. The other thing, let's just curl this guy out here. And pretty much any tractor, you curl the bucket to this tractor or construction equipment, you curl it to this extent. When the machine is off, if you tried to curl it back, it wouldn't curl back. Even if you lower the boom, it's not gonna curl back because it doesn't have any pressure. Well, on this one, if you try to curl it back and then you, you actually let the boom down, as you can see, it's curled itself back magically. So those familiar with hydraulics may already know the answer to this. And I'm making this video because I have not seen the answer put out anywhere. Maybe it's common knowledge. Maybe I'm wasting everybody's time, but I thought it was interesting and, uh, I thought I would share it because I haven't had a Kubota in a while and, and the, the loader valve, while it was something I knew about, was not something on my radar to actually explain to anyone. So you see those two symptoms, very interesting. The other one 
that I got before I actually realized what was happening is this. So I'm going to start it up and I'm going to lift the loader uh, boom up. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to move this back and forth. And on pretty much any piece of machinery, if you were to do that, as long as you, you, know, you pull back completely, basically sending all the flow to the boom, and then you engage a different circuit, you'll see some variation in speed. Well, on this tractor, we do this. It does not vary. Now, on the way down, On the way down, it does vary. So that's a clue in and of itself. But um, whenever I was starting to investigate this, I was like, what? what? How can it be so smooth on the way up, even when you engage a different, uh, a different circuit? Because that different circuit needs to take some of that fluid. So ultimately, to find this out, I took the loader off. I put two hydraulic flow meters, one on the curl, one on the dump. And what did I find? I would mock this up and show you, but I don't know that it's that interesting. What I found was, so I had a given RPM, open the valve completely, three gallons per minute. And I had already done for this RPM, so I knew that at that RPM, three gallons a minute was about right. Then, you know, I curled it, three gallons per minute. That's what you would expect. There's typically on these tractors, there's nothing that uh, changes the flow going to the loader pretty much everything that comes from the pump you have in the loader. But when I opened the curl cylinder and the loader cylinder, I found that three gallons per minute were flowing through both meters at the same time. So that's six gallons per minute. How could it magically create six gallons per minute when I know for sure that the pump is only producing three? Well, only one answer well, two if you believe in magic, but one answer is this valve is in series, which generally is an inferior approach, I would say, as far as hydraulic valves go. Typically, you want your valves to be in parallel. By being in parallel, they are independent, completely independent of each other, and what you do on one doesn't affect the other, so long as it doesn't steal all the flow. And so that's what's happening like on a John Deere in a stock form. If you use a John Deere that has a parallel valve, which it does, uh, if you push all of your flow into one circuit, whenever you go to the other one, it's only going to send flow to the other one if that path is an easier path of flow than the one that you opened. And that's why on a John Deere you can't just bring it into the corner. In a valve in series, like this one is, the boom is first, the bucket is second. In this valve in series, whenever you open this up, what's actually happening is the flow is, is certainly going and raising the loader, but when you call for additional flow to the second, uh, second spool in series, the exhaust flow of this is actually going into the curl circuit. So you're not really getting six gallons per minute, but since you're reusing this, the three gallons per minute that you're sending here, you're reusing the exhaust flow, you are effectively getting six gallons per minute. So that's the solution. That's why when anybody, child, person who's never sat on a tractor, can sit on this tractor, pull it into the corner, and you, you can have two functions at once happen because one, you have a lot more flow because you're reusing the flow, six gallons a minute, much better than just having three. And because it's going from one to the other, it's not interrupted. So no matter what you do, you're not stealing from one to pay the other, you're actually reusing one to work the other. So that's the secret to Kubota's two function capability and it has nothing to do with the fact that other tractor manufacturers are putting an inferior valve. Technically, I would say, this is an inferior valve, but in this case, it gets superior results in a lot of scenarios, right? One scenario is you're running 
dirt from one place to the next. You're going to have a whole lot more flow to use as you come back to your dirt pile and you want to realign to your uh, to get a new bucket, you basically have double the flow that the others have. And because it's being reused, it is, a, it is definitely a more smooth and a more effective, um, you can be more effective with it because you can be faster. That said, uh, if you have enough flow, maybe somebody with a John Deere and Hydros Plus, we'll say, you can actually uh, feather the valve and get the same experience and and you get the advantage of the fact that you can actually do more with it and i say it that way because valves in series their pressure is actually compounded so here's the example if you have this have something that needs a thousand psi here and a thousand psi there if you were to open this valve both valves at the same time, say you were putting something on a shelf with forks, it would stop if, say, the, the pressure relief valve is set below 2,000, which this one is, because they compound. That would be 2,000 pounds of system pressure. If it were a parallel valve and you were to do the same thing, then it would only be 1,000 PSI system pressure. So th that's one advantage. The other advantage is, let me show you this, because this is interesting to me on how this one does it. Let me pull this back. So I'll pull this back and I run the, over the pressure relief valve. Once the pressure relief valve is tripped with valves in series, the next valve won't work. Now, there's something funny about this tractor and anytime the pressure relief valve is tripped, nothing works. <laughs> so, and what I mean is if you, if, you, you, if you trip the pressure relief valve with this, the loader doesn't work. Uh, that's not necessarily odd, but, but what is odd is, is regardless of which one of these functions trips the pressure relief valve, everything stops working. I was expecting that when the boom trips it, that the bucket won't work, but if the bucket tripped it, the boom would work because it's in front of it. That's not what happens. Uh, everything stops. That's gonna be problematic if you have a third function, you're using a grapple, you're trying to hang on to something as you're curling it back, because when you hit that button, once it hits its extent, it's gonna send fluid over the pressure relief valve and you, your loader's gonna quit working. So you're gonna have to let off the button, try to curl it more, pinch it more. So I think there are some downsides to this series valve for this particular tractor it may actually be a better solution. I would not want a valve in series on, especially the larger M series and, and bigger tractors like that. And I don't know if they use those uh, on the bigger tractors or even the L and LX. I don't actually know because I don't have one. But what I would say is for a lot of people for this tractor and what they're gonna use it for, they're not gonna be buying limb saws or even augers, augers wouldn't matter. Uh, so you don't need more hydraulic flow. You may not need any additional capacity. We'll add that with Hydros Plus, but maybe this is the right valve for this small, the smallest of the Kubota tractors. Uh, me personally, I would rather have a more flow and a parallel valve. I think that's solving the problem. This solves for the symptom of not being able to use two functions at once effectively when you have low flow, but the real solve for the problem, I think, is more hydraulic flow. But of course I would think that. So I hope this is interesting. Uh, I, it was something I learned, I wanted to share it. Again, maybe common knowledge for everybody else. It's not for me uh, until now. But I will be putting this tractor through some paces just to see if I can discern any real difference between having a valve in series and a valve in parallel. I'm, I don't know what I'll come out with, but I have a, a better than good chance, I think, that I will believe that this is the right valve for the smaller tractor. One thing I do wonder about on this tractor is this bucket is so small, you can almost hide it inside of the standard uh, one series bucket. I wonder if that is because of the pressure limitations that you'll have on a, a valve that's in series. That's just a guess, I have no idea, but uh, 
one of the things I want to consider for this tractor as a product is a larger bucket. Everything else is very similar to the one series. The one series wields the 53 inch bucket with no trouble. It'll even wield a larger bucket. I've taken the one off my three series and used it as a material bucket. So I think that a, a bigger bucket would, would make sense, especially if we had some lift capacity. So questions, comments, leave them below. And thanks for watching.